An Alberta girl was shot in the back by her brother last week. Today she will be buried while he appears in court. Things are looking up for the retail industry and Princess Caroline is now married for the second time. I'm Holly Stern for Kick Info 107. It's 12 o'clock, minus 15 degrees. An eight-year-old Alberta girl will be buried today. Her 12-year-old brother will appear in court charged with killing her. She was shot in the back at close range last Friday, and police charged the boy with manslaughter on Monday. The two children are from Alliance, 120 kilometers east of Red Deer. After the girl was shot, the boy called a neighbor who rushed her to the hospital about 20 miles away. The staff of that hospital wanted to take her to Edmonton, but she died before she got there. Two youngsters almost died over Christmas after drinking alcohol left around by parents. There are also dozens of kids that were hospitalized for the same reason. A Calgary hospital has been getting about 15 calls a day from parents afraid that their kids have been drinking. In one case, a girl became comatose and had to be hospitalized after she drank rye from a bottle she found while playing. A poison treatment official in the city says parents don't realize how dangerous alcohol and some perfumes are. Children can start behaving in very odd ways and if they have enough of it, they can die. Everyone who's driven on Calgary roads in the past week know how icy they are, and that's probably the reason behind this accident. Two semi-trailer trucks collided in the intersection of Glenmore Trail and Bar Barlow Trail. That intersection has been closed and won't be open again for a couple of hours. If you have to go in that direction, find another way to avoid it. The Bank of Canada rate is supposed to drop a tiny bit today, but there shouldn't be any change in lending rates. Right now, it's at 10.04%. Canadian retailers should do better in 1984 than they did this year, especially those retailers who have weathered the recession well. Researchers say consumers bought $100 billion worth of goods in 1983, and they're going into the new year with more money in the bank and more confidence. Ontario is expected to continue experiencing above-average growth, while Alberta and Quebec will lag behind the rest of the country. Premier Lougheed outlined his government's priorities for 1984. There are three of them, overhauling the provincial educational system, reducing the budget deficit, and expanding exports for natural gas. Lougheed says even with high unemployment and an increase in income tax, Alberta still has the strongest economy of any province in Canada. The boom years of the late 1970s are gone, but he says slow, steady growth can be made. There are no details given, but he said the school system has to get back to basics. He says Albertans will have to adjust their expectations to meet current problems. Oil patch companies that made it through the recession are looking around for opportunities in Canada. The smaller ones are keeping up their operations in the, in the States and Australia, but they'll concentrate on Canada in 1984. Silverton Resources, a Calgary-based firm, will be spending most of its money here. After the National Energy Program was introduced in 1980, lots of companies looked elsewhere to develop, but incentives that were introduced since 1980 have made conditions better here. People don't want to leave their homes after hydrogen sulfide gas accidentally leaked into gas lines in California. About 46,000 residents of six communities in the Santa Barbara area were advised to leave, but 95% of them are staying put. The Southern California Gas Company is working to clear the gas lines of the toxic gases. The cold snap in both Canada and the United States continues. The mercury was down to minus 27 in Ontario and minus 18 in Texas. The cold caused a snowstorm in Alabama. Across the U.S., the death toll from 12 days of bad weather rose to 403. The latest mass of cold Arctic air is centered in the American Midwest and the Canadian prairies. Florida orange growers have taken stock of their losses caused by this week's freeze. The estimate is that 28% of the expected output of frozen orange juice concentrate will be lost. That works out to $250 million in damages. Some members of Kuwait's parliament have proposed grisly death sentences for terrorists, including cutting off their arms and legs until they die. The proposals follow a series of bombing attacks in Kuwait on December 12th in which five people were killed and more than 60 injured. Targets included the American and French embassies. And Princess Caroline of Monaco married a wealthy Italian businessman today in a civil ceremony in the Royal Palace in Monte Carlo. It's the second marriage for the 26-year-old daughter of Prince Rainier and the late Princess Grace, the first time for 23-year-old Stefano Casaraghi. That's the news. I'm Holly Stern for Kick Info 107.